Welcome. Today I want to talk a little bit more about finite calculus, ultra finitis calculus. It's impromptu. First of all, I want to say something about ultra finitism. <coughs> so I wrote you down uh, uh, three ultra finitists. Ethanine Volpin has in 59, 61, I've written uh, an article about ultrafinitism. He called it, he associated it with intuitionism, but that's a little bit misleading because uh, Brouwer was accepting infinity. So ultrafinitists don't accept infinity. <clears throat> there is no infinity, and consequently, there is also there are no limits. And every expression which we have is finite, so sums are all finite. For example, uh, there are no infinite sums, so all sums are finite. So these are the rules. I'm interested in this because I'm teaching calculus and uh, I, I'm interested in versions of finite calculus. So the goal, <coughs> take a textbook, take a result from calculus and take it verbatim in a model, in a finite model, and interpret it. <coughs> and one of these test cases is the Gaussian integral formula, but when you are in the complex plane. <coughs> so that was the Gaussian integral formula. We have seen, if you interpret this correctly, this is a finite sum in a discrete lattice, and this is an analytic function, and we have defined what an analytic function is, essentially a function with zero curl everywhere, and then this z minus a dz, 1 over z minus a dz was interpreted as a, as a gradient of a function, the gradient, so even so this was not analytic, the inverse function of the exponential function was not analytic even away from zero, it's not any, any function on the lattice, we have the exterior derivative is a one form. We have an interpretation in a finite setting. So I want to kind of go a little bit further. There was a little bit of problem in that if you take a, a function which is, which is, which is analytic, it, it might have infinitely many terms, like, like e, to the, e to the z. We have defined what z to the n is, and uh, for positive z, or z actually in this in this in this first quadrant of the complex plane here. So z is not but on the on the other part here, so that that was this is not finite. This is not finite because if z is negative, we have defined it as z times z minus one times z minus two. For example, that was z z cubed. So that that doesn't end when you have a negative. When you have a negative number. Uh, minus one, minus two, minus three. This, this, the z to the n doesn't really end. So this sum, when you take evaluate this for z negative, you don't get the finite sum. So that's not acceptable for a, for an ultra finitis. Don Zellberger has said that, and he actually predicted that maybe in ten thousand years, mathematicians will look at us and laugh about that we we have used. Of infinity, and uh, I would I would say even in 50 years we don't really need. Uh, so why don't we take here thousand? We can say in 50 years we don't need infinity. How how do we uh, want to proceed? So we want to have expressions which are only finite finite sums. Every Taylor series is finite, terminates after finitely many steps, and still we want to ha to have all the all the results from calculus. We want to have you know, for example, the solution of this differential equation f prime is equal to f, with f zero is equal to one is solved by the exponential function, and this we want to have also in the in the discrete, and we want to have a Taylor series, and we want to have this Taylor series to terminate for every z in finitely many steps. So that goes beyond what we have done before, because I just mentioned this example here. This doesn't terminate for negative, so we actually need a limit here. And we need infinity, so that's not not acceptable for ultra ultra finities. So this is Zellberger. 
Nelson, <coughs> so it's called, it's called this radical elementary. So that's the name for ultrafinitism. <coughs> This ultrafinitism is actually a point of view for, for computer scientists. This is a computer science computer science scientist point of view. So if you are if you are working with uh, computers, if you are working also with the brain, which is also a computer, you only can do finitely many things. You can only uh, deal with finitely many data. You can only process finitely many data. You can write down finitely many symbols, and uh, there is even uh, uh, more limitations. You can. For example, ask yourself what happens with 2 to the 100. Uh, Alexander Ezenin Volpa was once asked whether he accepts uh, 2 to the 100. He was also kind of more like a poet and uh, so a dissident. Uh, so was it Bos BU, Boston University? You cannot count to 2 to the 100. So he was asking a seminar, do you accept 2? <coughs> do you accept 4? Do you accept 8? And so on. From where on do you no more accept that the number exists? And uh, he just said, do you accept two? Yes, I accept it. Do you accept four? Yes, accept it. Do you accept eight? Yes, I accept it. And so on. So he made the point that, you know, in order to accept two to the 100, you would have to wait <laughs> extremely long. And uh, that's not reasonable because 10 to the 17 seconds, that's the, that's the, H, you know, of the, of the universe, as we as we know, since the Big Bang. So that's that, that, that is much smaller than two to the one. You can never really count to two to the. So uh, that's that's what I wanted to kind of say about ultrafinitism. And but it's a very clear program. What we actually want to do is we want to take a book, calculus book, and we want to interpret it in a finite in a finite setting and see see whether we can do that <clears throat> and yes we can do that in a for a large uh, part of calculus let's just let's just look at that in the next so what we have done last time we have defined kind of in the real of uh, Z U to the end, where this Z U was X minus one. We look at the algebra of so. What we do is we just work in that algebra of in this non-commutative algebra. So, so that's an essential part which we which we need. So, for example, Z z squared z cubed so these are now functions these are operators here z u to the n is an operator it's kind of an element in that if you make it commutative then uh, if you make it commutative here this is called the abelianization then you get the you get these functions here so and this was done in such a way that and we have also done it in the in the complex. So that's what we did. We just deformed the algebra so that we have uh, polynomials are all analytic and it's the same. This is really the same setting we have also in the in the continuum. So this is a finite model. That's what I mean with a finite model. We have a finite model. There's a problem uh, in that some expressions are involved in finite in finite sums. And so I, I the last week I uh, decided to actually modify this algebra a little bit and make it relativistic. Okay. Relativistic meaning that it depends on where you put the origin. So what we could do also, we could take the of H and then H. So 
So we are, for us, limits are completely off. So we have no limits. We don't want even also to have this limit h goes to, to zero. So we take the h equal to one, just because. But what happens is you have some freedom here, right? This is a kind of going forward. We can also go backwards and we so we all take h negative. So in the real case, what we actually do is for z positive. Now this modifies the algebra a little bit and uh, it doesn't matter in the limit when h goes to zero so and also it doesn't change anything with with respect to the the rule so we still have <coughs> You can check it separately on the positive part and negative part. It's just a mirrored part, right? On the negative, on the negative side, you just differentiate in the other direction. So that still works. And uh, but now, what is very important is that's kind of the key. So that's extremely important because, say, if we if we are looking, we are just look we look at Taylor expansions then. Just Taylor expansions give you give you fitting, give you actually data fitting problems. So you have finitely many data, and you want this to be kind of also for negative. This should also work for negative z. And in order to make this for negative z and to have only finitely many terms, what we really which so for every for every z should have only finitely many terms. In that case, the things things become finite so with this uh, so we do the same thing also in a in a complex case so you take h x is equal to one h y is equal to one here this is the usual thing this is what we have done before we take the same same definitions here here we take h x negative one and h y is equal to one. Here we take h x equal to negative one. H y is equal to negative one. Here we take h x equal to one. H y is equal to negative one. And you can still check. So you have still the same rules, the same analyticity, but everything is kind of just mirrored. So, so, so the so the analyticity condition is still, is still the the same. But now what we have is kind of really, we have a what, what we have is also for negative z, we get uh, finite expressions here, and that's really the key. So that's the key. That's that's the finitist dream, right? That's what we want. <coughs> so all sums are finite. In the sense that for every z you have only finitely many expressions. Of course, when z is getting large, you have more expressions. But what happens is for every z we only need finitely we have finitely many terms. So that's the that's the new thing. Let me just show you here. I have here a camera, and I have here uh, uh, my computer. Maybe I'll just also will, will, will display it in. So I have here Mathematica. <coughs> I have here an implementation of uh, the original z to the n algebra. You see it's also a little bit asymmetric. So when you look at the symmetric version now, everything is, is, is symmetric. And uh, let, let me just go to the next section uh, to see why this is, why this is important. <coughs> So the upshot so far is that uh, when we go into a finite setting, we are forced, first of all, to have non-commutativity. So we have a in a non-commutative algebra. You are forced to have a relativistic thing where, you, where, the, where, the, where it matters where you actually are. But let me just look at that. So first of all, when we have a, the theorem, <coughs> So for 
every z we have just a finite we have just a finite sum so this is this is really totally acceptable for affinities but it's all finite and that's the, that's the point now everything is finite so the expressions is finite so let's just look at examples <coughs> so that's pretty cool so and of course the other example which actually came in Cauchy so 1 over 1 minus c is 1 plus c plus c squared plus c <coughs> and uh, we have also the, the log and we just integrate that so we have c uh, so minus log z, c plus z squared half plus c cubed third. So this is also analytic. <coughs> Weird. <coughs> they are completely finite. These are these are finite finite sums for every z. This is a finite sum. We can evaluate that this definition with this one over one minus c. Uh, what you have is that that the, all these Cauchy integrals are zero. This is from the Cauchy integral theorem, which says that it's for an analytic function, the, the contour integral along a closed curve is equal to zero. So let me just, just leave it with that. Uh.